That little girl was me. She was naming ceremonies, right? It is, it is a gift that is um, an incredible familial gift. The family gives the child a name. The whole <laughs> conversation about, <laughs> mostly among his friends, whether he should just be called the first dude. <laughs> first dude. And other, other names that I can't repeat on national television. And it will be even more historic when it turns out to have backed Ben Biden to his designated successor, Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris is making headlines again, but this time it's not about the election. Well, it's about a leaked secret tape tying her to an unexpected connection with none other than Montel Williams. With the election just around the corner, things were already intense. But then Matt Wallace, a known right-wing influencer, decided to shake things up with an explosive claim. Wallace took to X, which you probably remember as Twitter, to announce something that could stop the internet in its tracks. A supposed tape featuring Kamala Harris and Montel Williams. Now, this wasn't just a random post either. According to Wallace, he got this news from a friend who's the CEO of a major tech company, suggesting some kind of insider knowledge behind his words. In his post, he didn't hold back, stating, Wow, I was just informed by my friend, who is the CEO of a large tech company, that there is allegedly a tape being shopped around involving Kamala Harris and Montel Williams. This could seriously damage the Harris campaign with just eight days until the election. And of course, people went wild. The internet's reaction? Well, we did expect an avalanche of comments, debates, and conspiracy theories each person trying to make sense of whether this is just another smear attempt or something more serious. You see, people are torn between thinking this is a big distraction tactic and wondering if there's any real substance here. After all, Harris is on a huge path in her political career, with the potential to make history as the first black and Asian American woman to lead a major ticket. A leak like this, whether real or not, comes with the potential to turn her campaign upside down. Wallace's timing couldn't have been more calculated, and now, with just days left until voting, he's made people question everything they thought they knew about Harris. And here's where things start getting complicated. Montel Williams and Kamala Harris actually did have a public relationship back in the early 2000s, though that's all ancient history by now. Most people had long forgotten about it, but this supposed tape has everyone thinking back to that time, digging up old photos of Harris and Williams and wondering if something from their past could still impact Harris today. It's not unusual for campaigns to get hit with scandals in their final days, especially with such a high-stakes position on the line, but this particular rumour is different. It combines politics, fame, and personal drama in a way that's got everyone watching, even those who aren't normally into politics. As soon as the rumour started swirling online, it blew up, pulling in everyone's attention and creating a buzz across social media. But Montel Williams, now 68, didn't stay silent for long. He hit back with a sharp response on his own social media, making it clear he was not here for any of these wild claims. He wrote, Wow, I hear a blogger I've never heard of got millions of views claiming someone is shopping a tape of me that will break the internet. He wasn't leaving any room for doubt about how he felt. With that single line, Williams took the wind out of the rumour's sails, dismissing it as yet another piece of baseless internet drama. But Williams didn't stop there. He doubled down, adding that there is no tape and that Kamala Harris's surge clearly has some people worried. He framed the rumour as an attempt to derail Harris's growing momentum as she neared one of the biggest moments of her career, seeing the rumour as nothing more than a tactic to shake things up when the stakes were highest. His response was as straightforward as it gets, cutting through the noise and redirecting attention back to the real issues. For those who remember, this wasn't even the first time Williams and Harris had been caught up in the rumour mill. 
The two had briefly dated in the early 2000s, something that some just couldn't seem to let go. Back in 2019, Williams had to clear things up when their past relationship suddenly became a talking point again. He kept it casual, posting, Kamala Harris and I briefly dated about 20 years ago when we were both single, so what? It was a classic, no-nonsense response, treating the whole thing as the non-issue it really was. With Williams shutting down the latest rumour so directly, the internet had to take a step back. While speculation and drama have their place in the world of politics and celebrity, his straight-to-the-point response reminded everyone that not everything that trends has a kernel of truth. It's a reminder that sometimes the most explosive rumours are just noise, especially in a landscape where attention-grabbing headlines can easily overshadow reality. As the election draws closer, this kind of speculation is likely to pop up again, but for now, Williams's rebuttal has set the record straight. Now, let's take a look at Kamala Harris's dating history before her marriage. There's definitely some interesting history there. Harris wasn't always immersed in the political spotlight alone. She had a few high-profile relationships along the way that certainly caught people's attention. Among her most notable past relationships, she dated none other than talk show host Montel Williams and, at one point, former San Francisco mayor Willie Brown. Yes, that's right, Kamala and Willie Brown were an item and their relationship had its own layer of public intrigue, especially considering Brown's influence in California's political landscape at the time. Kamala and Willie Brown dated until 1996, which had its fair share of media interest, particularly given Brown's prominent role in San Francisco's political scene. Beyond just dating, Brown actually became something of an informal advisor to Harris. Interestingly, in a twist of fate, years down the line, he reportedly advised her to turn down the vice presidential role if Joe Biden ever extended the offer. Brown apparently suggested that she aim instead for the US Attorney General position, viewing it as a more strategically sound role in terms of her political ambitions. He warned that being on a presidential ticket, while prestigious, was historically challenging and sometimes even a dead end. Fast forward to today though, and it's pretty clear Kamala had her own plans, ones that led her all the way to becoming vice president. Then came Montel Williams, who Kamala dated around 2001. This relationship was a bit different from her past. Harrison Williams' DuBHO was already a prominent talk show host at the time, made a few public appearances together, including a memorable red carpet moment at the Race to Erase MS Gala in Los Angeles. They weren't exactly hiding their relationship, walking the red carpet alongside Montel's daughter, Ashley. It was a brief chapter, but one that people still remember, especially because Williams himself has since spoken fondly of Harris. Years later, he went on social media to clear the air on their past, sharing that they had dated about 20 years ago, and that he continues to admire her work and achievements today. Kamala's connections with influential figures like Brown and Williams highlight how she was mingling in circles of power and influence even before her rise to national politics. These relationships were perhaps a stepping stone in her journey, but they clearly weren't the end game for Kamala. Kamala Harris may have had a few notable relationships in her past, but her true love story began in the most unexpected, charming way on a blind date. Back in 2013, Harris's close friend Chrisette Hudlin decided it was time for Kamala to meet someone special. Chrisette, who was practically family to her, called Kamala up one day with a bit of matchmaking on her mind. She told Kamala about this guy in LA, a smart, charming lawyer named Doug Emhoff, and insisted that they meet up. Of course, Chrisette had one little request. She didn't want Kamala to look him up online before the date. But let's be real, who can resist a quick Google search? So in a relatable moment, 
Kamala did what so many would. She did a quick online check on Doug before their first date. She later shared this fun little detail in her 2019 memoir, The Truths We Hold, adding a light-hearted twist to their first meeting. Kamala probably found some interesting things about Doug online, but nothing could really prepare her for what was to come. Then came Doug's side of the story, and it's just as sweet. Right before they were set to meet, Doug decided to send her a text. It wasn't your smoothest text either, it was one of those funny, awkward ones that make you smile because of how real it feels. The charm was in how genuine he was, no pretenses, just a guy trying to make a good impression. The real kicker was Doug's first voicemail to Kamala. Before their big phone chat, he nervously dialed her number, and in his own words, he kind of fumbled his way through the message. What started as a simple, hey it's Doug, turned into a long, winding voicemail filled with um and uh moments. It went on for what Doug described as four or five minutes of stumbling, and he was convinced he had completely blown his chance. But sometimes it's the little imperfections that make someone memorable, right? Rather than being put off, Kamala found the whole thing endearing. She saw the sincerity in Doug's nervousness, and instead of second-guessing the date, she felt a spark of warmth and curiosity. Doug's persistence and endearing awkwardness may have started things off, but once Kamala and Doug finally talked on the phone, everything just clicked. He went on and on, rambling about wanting to chat with her at some point, nervously spilling every thought as if he were hanging on to every second. Kamala found it charming. She couldn't help but laugh at how sweet and genuine it was. From that very first phone call, it was clear that Doug was someone who put his heart out there. After that, they couldn't stop talking. The chemistry was instant, and the conversation just flowed effortlessly, like they'd known each other forever. They quickly planned their first date for that Saturday in Los Angeles. Kamala was really impressed by Doug's confidence and how comfortable he was in his own skin. They spent the evening chatting about everything, and by the end, it felt like they were already imagining a future together. Doug was so smitten that the next morning, he sent Kamala an email outlining his schedule for the next six months, making it clear he wanted her in his life. As he would later say, it was love at first sight, and he wasn't about to let that chance go. Doug's openness and sincerity were undeniable, and Kamala knew she had met someone truly special. In fact, Doug soon confessed that he was the first to say, I love you marking the beginning of their journey together with a simple but powerful moment. For Kamala, someone who valued authenticity and loyalty, Doug's straightforward approach was a breath of fresh air. The couple moved forward with purpose, fully embracing each other's lives, quirks, and families. Before meeting Kamala, Doug was already a family man. He had two kids, Cole and Ella, from his previous marriage to Kirsten Emhoff. They tied the knot in 1992 and had a great partnership for many years, even after their divorce in 2008. Kirsten, who is also a lawyer, once joked about being surprised to marry a lawyer like Doug, but his kindness and smarts won her over. Doug's kids were everything to him, and since Kamala grew up with divorced parents, she totally got how important it was to take things slow. She wanted to make sure her relationship with Doug was solid before stepping into the role of a stepmom, especially since it would affect Cole and Ella. Kamala waited around two months before meeting Cole and Ella, knowing the significance of that first meeting. When they finally did meet, she was delighted by how welcoming and open they were. Rather than being guarded or hesitant, Cole and Ella embraced her presence in their dad's life, showing warmth and maturity that instantly deepened her affection for Doug. Kamala often credits Doug's children for drawing her in even closer. Their warmth and acceptance made her feel like she truly belonged. Kamala and Doug officially tied the knot on August 22, 2014, in a small, intimate ceremony officiated by Kamala's sister, Maya. Rather than traditional titles, Kamala embraced a unique family role with Doug's children, Cole and Ella. 
Steering away from Stepmom, she took on the affectionate nickname Momala, which captured her warm relationship with the kids and their close-knit bond. Kamala didn't just marry Doug, she became part of a larger modern family that supported each other wholeheartedly. By the time Kamala became a US Senator in 2017, she and Doug had settled into their rhythm, balancing their careers and family life across both coasts. As Kamala stepped into the national spotlight, Doug continued to be her biggest cheerleader. When she was sworn in as Vice President of the United States on January 20th, 2021, Doug made history right alongside her as the first ever second gentleman and the first Jewish spouse of a president or vice president in American history. Doug has since used his role to advocate for causes close to his heart, including reproductive rights, anti-Semitism, and access to legal aid. The two make a remarkable team, driven by shared values and a deep mutual respect. In Doug's words, he sees his role first and foremost as being a really good husband, providing unwavering support as Kamala navigates her historic role. Doug's previous marriage to Kirsten Emhoff has been another testament to the family's strong foundation. Kirsten has always been a source of support for Kamala, both in family and politics. In fact, Kamala has praised Kirsten, calling her an incredible mother and a dear friend. Their bond extends beyond co-parenting. They've created a true partnership. Kamala and Kirsten even became a duo in the bleachers at Ella's sports events, where they would cheer for her together, much to Ella's embarrassment at times. Kamala once humorously remarked that their modern family is sometimes almost too functional, adding that everyone approaches their blended family with an abundance of love to share. This bond continued as Kamala's role expanded on the national stage. Kirsten has shown support through social media, sharing a post of a Time magazine cover envisioning Kamala as a future Democratic nominee. The post, shared in 2024, encapsulates her unwavering belief in Kamala, embodying what she humorously referred to as the power of manifestation. Kirsten's constant support and enthusiasm illustrate the strength and unity of their blended family. Now, what do you think? Do drop your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button for more such content. We'll be back pretty soon, so see you then.